Hello, my name is Ashley. I'm going to be doing your walkthrough for the Jayco 30 XP. You're 12 and a half foot up top, so on the highway you're good, even through toll booths. The only thing that you would need to be cautious of is anything with an overhang or roof. You want to make sure you at least have the 13 foot clearance. Also, you're a little bit long, so wider turns than usual. Um, starting on your driver's side, this first compartment here on the driver's side, you have some levelers and a first aid kit. The levelers are important to use if you're on any kind of unlevel ground. The only way to tell if the RV is unlevel at all is by the feel on the inside. Um, if you're any kind of unlevel, you're going to want to use the leveling blocks to drive onto uh, to fix whatever side of the RV is unlevel. If you are on unlevel ground, you won't be able to extend the slide out on the RV and you'll also have problems with your fridge. Um, you need to be level in order for the fridge to operate correctly because if it's any kind of unlevel, the Freon will not reach the fridge. So you'll start to have fridge problems. So parking in someone's driveway, if the driveway is at any kind of incline or uh, a campsite that's unlevel, uh, you would just need to use the leveling blocks uh, to make sure that the RV is completely level. Um, so we have the leveling blocks. We have the generator on the outside, which you won't need to worry with. You can start and stop the generator on the inside. When we go inside, I'm gonna explain to you the difference between the plug-in and the generator. Your power plug for the RV is right here. It's a 30 amp power plug. The other part is connected to the RV. So you literally just pull out the electric cord and plug this into a 30 amp campsite plug. Um, once you're plugged in, everything in the RV will work normally. Your microwave, your TV, your AC in the back of the RV cabin, um, your 110 outlets, everything will work normal as long as you're plugged into a 30 amp power also, plug. Also in the same compartment where the power plug is, you will find this 110 adapter. This can be used to attach to the back of the 30 amp and you can plug into a 110 outlet for power. The only thing about using this adapter is you will not be able to run the AC if you're using this. The AC is too powerful and this plug is just not strong enough to run the AC. So you'd be able to run everything else. You can run the microwave, the TV, um, your 110 outlets will work, um, but your AC would not be able to work off of this plug. However, if you're just plugged in with your 30 amp plug, everything works normally. But if you're using this adapter, you're going to someone's house or what have you, and you just don't have the ability to use a 30 amp, you can use the 110, but again, the AC will not work off so of this plug. So in the same compartment where your power cord is, right above it, you have some 110 outlets and you have a cable plug-in. So if the campsite or wherever you're going offers cable hookup, you have that hookup in the same compartment with your power. So cord. still on the driver's side of the RV, we covered the leveling blocks, where your generator is located, where your power cord is located, and then right here is your waste hose. Um, your waste tanks are right here and it's labeled on the outside, black holding tank and gray holding tank. Um, and it's right here. Right now it's open just to show you that it has been dumped. When you're at the campsite or uh, when it's time for you to dump your waste, and I'm going to show you on the inside how you know when it's time to dump. Uh, this is where you would hook in so your this hose. This is what your waste hose looks like. And I have both the tanks closed. When you're at the campsite or when it's time to dump, it's going to look like this. Everything's going to be closed. What you would want to do first is pop the cap off. The part with the teeth locks in to here. This part will go to wherever you're dumping. So most campsites, it'll be like a white pipe in the ground. You would just take the cap off and plug it in. Um, if you have a campsite that do does not offer the dumping service, a quick Google search of RV dump sites near me or just asking the campsite uh, 
where they know of a dumping place uh, because depending on the length of your trip, you're most likely gonna have to dump your waste at least once. So we're plugged in. We have it hooked into the RV here. The first one we're gonna pull is our black. So you just pull straight out to open. And then you'll pull your gray and you just pull straight out to open. So to open and close the tanks, it pushes in to close and pull out to open. So you'll know you're done dumping by the sound and also there's a clear cap right here. You can see when it's done. If you're gonna be staying at the campsite overnight or for you know a couple nights, you would just wanna leave it like this with both the black and gray open. Um, that way it's dumping as you're using. If it's a scenario to where you're just dumping and then you're leaving, uh, once it's done, you do the opposite. So you would push in your gray, close your gray first, and then close your black. Your black is your toilet waste. So everything that you flush down the toilet goes into the black holding tank. It holds about 31 gallons of waste. And again, I'm gonna show you inside how we check the levels on that and know when it's time to dump. And your gray holding waste is your sink and shower water, everything that goes down the drains. Um, and that's also about 31 gallons. Um, so at a certain point in time, it's gonna get close to full and you will have to dump it. So you always want to pull your black first, the heavy stuff first, and then pull your gray last. So this the sink and shower water kind of rinses out um, the toilet waste. And then when you're done, you do the opposite. You close the gray first and then you close your black. You pop off the hose and pop the cap on. And then you're Coming good Coming inside go. of the RV and up the steps. To your immediate left side at the top, right through the entrance here, you're gonna see your control panel. This is how we check the levels on everything. So I was just showing you your black and your gray waste tanks. How we check the levels on that is by pushing down the button here. So we'd push and hold. And as you can see, your black toilet waste is showing as empty and your gray sink and shower waste is showing as empty as well. When you press and hold down on this and it shows two thirds, it's time for you to dump it soon. And same for your gray. When this is showing two thirds, it's time to dump it soon. So now that we showed you how to dump the waste, your gas tank is right here, still on the driver's side. It's regular gas, truck stops only for gas. Um, truck stops give you more room and more height, so um, <clears throat> you're not driving into such a tight space. Most of our accidents do happen when customers try to fit a larger RV into a regular gas station. Um, so just try and avoid regular gas stations and uh, just look for those signs on the highway or um, Google search it on the maps and try and find a truck stop to fill up. And again, it's just regular gas. Also on the driver's side, this last storage area right here is your water system. So you have an outdoor shower and a water pump for the outdoor shower. Right here is your main concern, which is your water system. So when you are driving or when you are not hooked up to any type of water, you'll be using your storage water, which we call fresh water. So when you're driving or you're not hooked up to water and you wanna use your storage water, which is about 50 gallons, it's in the RV with you at all times, you wanna have the water system set to normal. So it tells us normal is three and five. So we position it to three and position this to five. So normal, we're using our city water, we're driving or we don't have the ability to hook up to water. So we leave it on normal. 
if we're at a campsite or we have water that we can hook up to, we would hook up to our city water, which is right here. The regular part of the garden, uh, it looks like a regular garden hose. One part has a colored attachment and one part just looks like a regular garden hose. This part will always go into the RV and then you screw it in. And then you're able to drop the other part down through here. And then the colored attachment goes to your outside source. So we're at the campsite and we're hooked up to their water. We would turn it to city fixtures, which is two and six. So we would position it to two and six. And now we would be getting direct access to water and is bypassing our storage water in the RV. I always suggest to customers before they leave the campsite or wherever they're hooked up to water to just top off your storage water. And how we do that is we go to city fill. So we go to one and six. You will know from the outside that your storage water has been filled because the water starts squirting back out. And then we would just switch it to normal because we'd be leaving the campsite. So three and five, we would take the garden hose out and then you would be good to go. So another bit of information, if you are set to normal, which we are now, which means we're not hooked up at a campsite, we're using our storage water, you want to have the water pump on inside. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second. If you are hooked up to the city water, which means your water hose is plugged in and you have it set to one and six, excuse me, two and six, the city fixtures, you want the water pump off inside because the hose is giving you enough water pressure to where you will not need the water pump. So again, if we're set to three and five normal, the water pump is on inside because we need the pressure to be able to use the water. If we're hooked up to the campsite, which is city fixtures two and six, we want the water pump off inside. There's also a way for you to check your storage water, which I'm gonna show you when we go inside. So city fixtures two and six were hooked up at the campsite. One and six city fill, we're filling up our storage water. Three and five normal, we're using our storage water. Country fill, sanitize, winterize, sanitize tank, you will never use. So coming inside to Turn the water pump on and off is right here. So we're using our storage water. We're not plugged into a campsite or we don't have the water hose plugged in. I would turn my water pump on so I can use the water. And this red light lights up telling me my water pump is on. When I'm at the campsite and I'm, or I'm plugged into a water source with the water hose in the RV, I'm turning the water pump off because I have enough pressure from the hose. Also, this button, the fresh, press and hold that, that tells you what your storage water level is. Right now it's low, it's at one third. So if I was at a campsite, I would wanna to top that off before I left so I could have enough water for using the restroom or sinks or what have you while I was on the road. 